Hi there, it's Andrea Haas with Elm Tree Education, and this is Lit Fits, where I answer elementary teachers' literacy instruction questions. And it also happens to be Halloween today, so I got a little festive for uh, today's Lit Fit segment. Um, all of these questions that I answer are ones that have been submitted by other elementary teachers. So if you have one that you would like me to answer, please make sure to follow the link uh, and go there to the form and put in your questions so that it could potentially be on one of my future segments and blog posts. Okay, so today's question. Move myself out of the way so you can see it. For fifth graders who were first graders during the pandemic, something we do have to think about, their education was interrupted. <laughs> Uh, I'm noticing kids who still reverse B and D, but is it something to worry about? So here is one thing I will say about that. A uh, long time ago, people used to say, oh, people who reverse their letters, they're dyslexic. Um, and that's not necessarily true, actually. I mean, dyslexia, really, there's a lot of things that get tested to determine whether uh, a child is dyslexic um, and could... Uh, letter reversals be part of it? Maybe, but not necessarily. It could totally be something else. In fact, usually um, what uh, the folks who are more in the know than me would say is it's probably something to do with working memory and visual processing. Um, so number one, what I will say is you should be talking to your occupational therapist if you have one in your building. If you have an OT in your building, you should be going to them because they are by far more of an expert than I am at this. I do have a special ed background. I do have some familiarity and I will give you some tips of things that I do know about it. But uh, I would say that a child who is probably 10 or 11 at this point in fifth grade, I'm guessing, um, is a cause for some concern. Now, like you said, they had an interruption of their learning when they were doing a lot of emergent literacy skills. And if they were having some visual processing delays or working memory delays, especially at that time, then maybe that is explaining why the reversals are still happening. Um, but I would still say that it's probably something for you to get a second set of eyes on. Um, and usually OTs are more than happy to come in and just pop in and do like a really quick informal observation just to check in and see uh, what they think before they would recommend maybe like a formal evaluation. Okay, so. Again, deferring to the OT people out there, but what I will say is this does not necessarily mean dyslexia, and this doesn't necessarily mean that it's like a major issue that the child can't get over with just like a little bit of support and help. So some of the things you can do in the meantime to help, uh, maybe before you get your OT in there, is um, give some visual reminders. Like I know something that I used to always do in second grade was I would use the, um, the bed you know, like I would have them put their hands up and I would say, okay, bed, right? Which one's the B? Which one's the D? Which way is it going? You know, and I'd see kids go like this before they like write because they just, the working memory and that processing just didn't cement all the things that need to happen to make <laughs> the letter get on the page. So um, I'd give them visual reminders. Sometimes people I've seen will just put like a little um, laminated like picture of a bed that you probably can just do a quick Google search of um, clip art and find it online um, and just put it on their desk as a, as a reminder, especially if the, that happens to be the B and the D are usually very popular ones that they're reversing. There's also P and Q um, and some others that they might also do. Also numbers can be reversed too and that could be common. Um, so whatever it is that they need a visual reminder for, um, give that to them. If they're doing a lot of reversals, do not overwhelm the child. So like kind of focus on one at a time um, and maybe ones that kind of make the same sort of shapes. Like I think you could probably say if you're going to combo them, you could probably talk about B and D and P and Q because they're very similar. Um, and really all this is is that you know, when, when we have our, our um, really young, young, early childhood experiences, I'm talking like from the beginning, um, kids start figuring out that, oh, this is a triangle, whether it's this way or this way, or, you know, if it's like this kind of a shape triangle, and I turn it no matter what, it's going to be a triangle. And the only time it actually starts mattering that directionality is when we talk about writing numbers and letters, right? So, or reading them. Um, and so 
that's where we have to kind of support the kid in realizing like, okay, no, the direction actually does matter now. It didn't before when you were younger and you were just talking about shapes that can be it's a triangle no matter which way you um, t twist it. But now this really actually does matter. So uh, another last tip I'll say is multi-sensory supports. I know that we do that a lot. Again, if you think about early childhood, um, they have like, you know, the shaving cream, like writing in the shaving cream or um, getting that sandpaper out and like feeling it with their fingers just to kind of get that multi-sensory stuff happening, not just the visual, but like the touch. Um, so you could also do that too, I think with older kids. And then also like if it really is a working memory processing situation that the, the executive functioning skill is just not there, play memory games. Like seriously, start playing memory games to boost up that working memory. Like the literal card memory game or the games where you're, you know, maybe you've got like a few minutes, like you're lined up and you're waiting for something. And so you need to like play like a little game in line with your class. You know, those times that you just have to put something in there to fill it. Um, maybe it's one of those games where you add on like, um, you know, somebody says something that starts with A and then the next person has to say that thing that starts with A and then something that starts with B. And the next person has to say the A and the B and then add on a C word. And then it keeps going, going, going. And so like the longer you go, the more you have to hold all those, those words in your working memory. So that could be another way that you could make it fun um, to try to get um, some support for that kiddo. But again, above all else, please go to your OT and talk to them because I, we really say usually reversals tend to work themselves out and go away by age seven, eight. So probably it would be time for somebody to get some eyes on this kiddo and then see see what's really happening. Okay, so uh, if you have any other questions for me and you'd like to submit them, I just want to remind you that you just need to go to this bit.ly link right here, um, bit.ly Elm Lit Bits and submit your questions and they just might get picked for my next Lit Bit segment. All right. For those of you who celebrate, happy Halloween, and I will see you next week. Bye.